Hey everybody, T1 Glistener Elf here with another beautiful rooftop. <laughs> T1 Glistener Elf here with another beautiful rooftop village. Rooftop village? What on earth? I'm thinking Treetop Village, the card. Here with another rooftop. <laughs> hey everybody, T1 Glistener Elf here. I'm on the roof, just chilling, getting a, a nice beautiful view while I talk to you about something that was asked by one of my patrons. Shouts to Rooklin who asked me what my thoughts on the Pioneer format are. And I'll add to that why I was wrong about Pioneer. Because I, I was not a believer, to be honest. And here's why. So when it comes especially to Eternal formats, this is obviously going to be true for Standard because Standard changes, but for Eternal formats, they're generally not going to take off terribly well unless they're different enough from what already exists. And this is part of why each new format that comes out has a bit of a harder time getting off the ground. So, for example, my favorite format now is Vintage. It is very different from anything else that exists in Magic. And unless you're on Magic Online or you're playing casually, you're probably not going to experience much of a Vintage scene. There's Old School, there's Legacy, there's Modern, there's Commander, they're all very different from one another. Either you have different rules governing the formats, modern is supposed to be, I say supposed to be, a turn four format where you're not supposed to win before turn four consistently without interaction. There are decks that can do it sooner than that. You're supposed to be able to interact with them, and ones that do so too consistently or too well are supposed to get banned, and so on. We get the idea. Vintage is a format that doesn't care <laughs> about your your silly shenanigans. It's a force of will format and it knows it. Um, and unlike, say, Legacy, you get the ac you get access to fast mana, so that changes the dynamic. That changes the what you're capable of doing. That curve very quickly. It's not just reserved for red deck wins and post decks and whatnot, and so on and so forth. Uh, of course, when I heard about Pioneer, immediately, like many people, I thought of Frontier. Now, Frontier has a similar time frame. It starts at the M15 frame being used, so it's a couple years off. And adding two years worth of cards doesn't seem like it does that much to differentiate it, but really importantly, fetch lands are banned. I grossly underestimated how much of an effect that would have on the format. Uh, for a number of reasons, there's a deck that I play I'm actually going to save it, I'm sorry, but there's an article that I'm writing for etherhub.com and that'll go over the deck that I play in Pioneer. Uh, but that is made... Admittedly, it's not... Well, I was trying to avoid the getting on copycat or mono green devotion or energy or anything that I'm pretty sure is going to get banned. Getting on that train. Something else. Uh, but the fundamentals of the format, the rules of the format, actually work counter to the deck that I'm trying to make. I'm self-aware of it and I know it, but it's the kind of thing that's its a unique format. What you're able to do is different than what you're able to do in any other sanctioned format because fetch lands are banned and of course different sets are allowed. You can go turn one fetch fatal push. You can't do that in Pioneer even though fatal push is a card. And so if they want to play I don't know, whatever they feel like playing. If they want to get out a Mana Dork, yeah, that's fine, you can push that, but you're not going to be able to turn it on for a Thought Knot Seer as readily because, well, fetch lands don't exist. It makes Thought Knot Seer that much better of a card, and so on. I appreciate different dynamics like that. And it's being, at least for now, at least as of when this is being recorded, as you can see, <laughs> it's being pretty actively monitored. Um, which, on the one hand, I'm a little wary of that. I'm a Smash Bros player, so when I see Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate, they get patches all the time, sometimes with drastic changes, but I'm also a Street Fighter player. And Street Fighter 5 especially has a tendency, had, I don't know if it's necessarily the case anymore, to shuffle around who's good so much that it made investing in a particular character, I wonder if that's like investing in a particular deck, hard to do. Uh, in a similar way, if it's too actively monitored, if things are banned too readily, I would be worried about players' willingness to invest in the format. 
Uh, but as it stands, if it's going to just be the most broken stuff, it's probably fine. And I imagine that they won't be doing this bannings, banning announcements every Monday forever. It's going to be while the format is developing, while it's evolving. So overall, I like Pioneer. I do. As someone who has made his own format, I appreciate seeing other formats. And the fact that it's sanctioned doesn't really add or detract from that. It's just another cool experience that we can have in the game. So that's it. That's it for now. And once again, though, uh, stay tuned because there will be an EtherHub article about deck I play. <laughs> I like it. I know it's not great, but I like it. It's near and dear to my heart and can't argue with that. I'm T1 Glistener Elf. Of course I'm going to play cards that are near and dear to my heart. Alright, that's it. Take care, Magic Community, and I will see you all later. Bye-bye. Actually, wait a minute. Just get a nice, good view. Look at that. Oh, I'm going to tan for a sec. And almost winter. <laughs> I love Georgia.